Howdy folks, welcome back from Michael Mile Arc. Tonight we are going to have a first look and cold and dark tutorial on the V-Flight Air. Ryan Navian 205 freeware offering by V-Flight Air. I actually don't own anything by V-Flight Air, but maybe that'll change after this. Um, I was made aware of this airplane, and I thought it was brand new, but it's not. It's been around since November of last year, I believe, although this update is pretty new. And I know a lot of you have been asking for cold and dark tutorials because you like my style of tutorials. Even though I do not consider myself an expert at all, I consider myself a learning hobbyist. I'm just bringing you all along for the ride while I learn. But you have been requesting more tutorials from me, so I'm more than happy to do it. So this is also a first look, meaning I have not done anything with this aircraft other than run through my checklist that I created for the cold and dark start just to make sure there weren't any holes or anything. So two for one today. Um, we are in Venice, Italy, just because I picked a random spot on the map and thought, you know, I have never flown in Venice. So we're gonna take off on the mainland, fly over the island, and I see another airport in the sim, if we pull up the map, actually. Um, Lima Indigo Papa Victor, that maybe we'll land at. I did not see this on Sky Vector, so maybe we'll land there. Obviously, our airplane is here to the top of the map, and then near the center is what people think of as Venice, is this island, which is sinking. That's why it's underwater. It never used to be underwater. Everyone thinks of the romantic gondolas. Um, it wasn't built that way. It's sinking. That's why I do know that much about Venice. And then just to the, well, I guess that's pretty much due southeast of Venice, is this airport that I didn't know was there. So maybe we'll land there. I haven't decided at this moment if we're going to land there or just fly around. Um, but that's where we are. I don't know if these would have made it to Venice because this was an American um, airplane used, I believe it was originally intended for civilian, but then it became so popular they used it for military as well. I tried to do some research. It was a long time ago when I first was made aware of this. And I'm just now getting to the video, so I haven't remembered everything, but I'm very excited about this. Look how beautiful this aircraft is. I'm so impressed. I don't know how this, I mean, I know how this is done, but I can never imagine doing this myself, even a tenth of this quality. Amazing. So I think that's all I need to do to preface this. Um, I am very excited to be flying tonight. I've been trying to get a video out to everybody for, well, a couple weeks now. Just real life has been super busy. I haven't even been doing Minecraft, and I'm a system a server operator, system ops, sys ops of a celebrity Minecraft server, and I haven't even been able to time to do that much. I've been really relying on my moderators to do the work for me. In fact, we had a big server problem tonight that I get to fix after this video. So anyway, without any more tangents, that's where we, this is where we are, this is what we're doing. Cold and dark start. So when you load the aircraft, the canopy is closed. So the only thing I did after loading the aircraft is I opened the canopy. And of course they have presets for that. I have a preset when the canopy is closed and a preset for when it is open. I think this dome light works. Yeah, that's super cool. That's awesome. Alrighty, so cold and dark start. My presets are set, my checklist is set. Um, oh yeah. There is the tablet thing here. I went through this. I'm learning how to use it. I got the plug in. I'm not going to use it for this flight, so we're just going to hide it right there. That's what I do. So when I'm loading this aircraft, before I even start recording, I'm hiding the tablet, opening the canopy. So those are the first two steps. So like every checklist in Cold and Dark Start of mine, um, I take the POH and I take the designer's checklist and I kind of try to include as much as I can. Sometimes I'll leave things out if I myself don't simulate those types of things. But in this case, I think this is the complete POH. I don't think I, um, I don't think Reader's Digest when they, when, they, when they shorten the books. What is that called? This is not an abridged checklist. I think I actually kept everything from the POH because it's simple enough. But um, this is how I do it. I'm not a real pilot, so this, you know, real pilots may disagree with me, but like I always say, little disclaimer, we are at the mercy of the simulator and what is simulated at the time, and we're at the mercy of the hobby. Some people care about certain things, some people don't. 
it's a hobby. You can treat it like an arcade game if you want to. You can treat it as practice for real life stuff if you want to. Um, so I'm always open to comments and suggestions. But um, this is just how I do this. I'm not saying it's the right way at all. It's just one way and how I use the sim. So uh, if you will, let's see, hour and a half. It's going to be less than that. Real world weather is turned off because whenever I do a first look, I always turn the weather off. That way, if the airplane is wonky, I can tell if it's me or the aircraft and not worry about the weather because that does affect things. All right, so parking brake. Where is it? In the set. And that's my reminder to turn my headphones down because that was louder than my kids. Okay, let's see. Generator on. I have to remember where this was because I did practice, but it was a long time ago. Generator is there. Battery is there. Check the green landing lights. They're green. Barometer, altimeter, and weather. Uh, two nine under two because we don't have other turned on. So we're just going to go two nine or nine or two. I guess would be there. Reset the flight controls. That's because my yoke is all goofy. So I just reset everything. Uh, rudder pedals are working. Yes, they are. Okay. Carb heat off, pushed in. Where was that carb heat pushed in? Because that's out. Okay, so that's in. All right, cowl flaps open. Push to open. So now they're open. Strobe and position lights are way over here, farther over here. They're right over here, strobe in position. All righty, mixture full rich, props full in for low pitch, throttle one quarter, check the fuel gauge over on the left here, half a tank, check fuel is pushed in. I think that's this red worn off thing. I can't really tell. Um, I don't know what that is. What's that? I didn't notice that when I was doing my practice. By practice, I mean just going through my checklist. I didn't practice flying or anything. Um, I think this is the cutoff. Because it says shot up. Pull. That's all it says. Well, that says emergency. And it's red. So that's pushed in. That's out. Pushed in. All right. Fuel pump on. Where did I see that? It's right here. There we go. Push electric starter. And we're up and running. To make sure that it isn't rolling away on us because that is a problem sometimes with the parking brakes on these things in the sim. Fuel pump off after engine runs smoothly at 800. So, if I bring, can I run smoothly at 800? There's 900. And there's 800. And it's smooth. So, fuel pump can come off. Okay. Gradually increase to 1200 for engine warm up. There we go. Must decrease RPM after oil temperature is 100. Is it 105 in the POH? But I think it means 150 because um, that'd be 125 in the middle. Why would you see 105, right? So I'm going to keep it to 150. When it gets to 150, since it's the center of the green, then I will um, reduce RPM. All right, let's see. We'll keep an eye on that. Sync the gyros. The warning doesn't come up, but if you saw my compass here change, now they're synced because I synced to them. A couple things I wanted to mention too. Um, we already talked about this tablet um, autopilot pops out which is nice so when you're looking ahead you can make autopilot changes we are going to try to use autopilot today I'm going to, well, I'm going to try we'll see also there's a record player in here and I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to mute the audio because this is a real song and last time I had an airplane that had a real song in it and I played it my video got taken down <laughs> for copyright even though the bot copywriting it wasn't even the group or the music that was playing. So it was double frustrating. So I'm going to mute the sim sound. And there's a record player here. 
plays awesome music. And if you watch this needle, it actually moves towards the middle. And when it gets to the middle of the record, it ends. So free your airplane, if you want to hear the song, just get the free your airplane, listen for yourself. It's this person who, even though I'm in my 40s, I'm much too young to know who this is. So I apologize to all of you who do know who that is. I guess I could Google it, but I don't know. But see, look, the needle's moving towards the middle. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that, and I'll bring the sim sounds back in. Um, and the other airplane that I had, that copyright thing, I just ended up putting in my own music that I had written in the files so I could play music, but um, I couldn't find the music file for this, so this is some other integration. So there it is. And if you push these here, put headphones on, and listen to what happens to the sound. It decreases by 8 decibels, as though you were in headphones. It's a really cool idea. That way your other sounds can stay the same. Um, like I said, I don't know what that was. I forgot what that... It's in the manual, I have to look that up. I can't remember what that does. Anyway, um, only there's like heat so it can get warm. Over here, maybe that's heat for the pilot and it's just worn off. Who knows? You also have lights over here. These lights are controlled by that. And then the panel lights are here. Which I guess I'm not seeing any change. Probably. Oh, yep, yeah, there's a little bit of change in there. Oh, yeah. Okay. If it were night, it'd be more change, of course. Um, what's this? Hydro power pull on. Oh, hydraulic power. Duh. We're going to use that in a minute. So, anyway, those are a little bit of the fun little things that aren't in the checklist that you can mess with if you want to. Fresh air, you can mess with that as well. Um, this is for the yolk. I don't think there's any other clickable Easter eggs or anything. I don't think. Oh, there's emergency shut off. Is that what the emergency shut off was? Hmm, interesting. Okay, anyway, moving along. Make sure flaps are up. Alrighty, so flaps are up. One thing I want to show you, though, um, is when you do use flaps, you have to come back here, and you need half flap, and there's your half flap indicator right there. So that's kind of a cool little thing. We will actually use that later. All right, hydraulic power on, so we can use the nose wheel, and that lights to turn on. Why? There we go. It was already on, I guess. That's strange. It wasn't on before, and I did my test. Anyway, hydraulic power's on. Lean the mixture. Uh, there we go. Oh, wait a minute. We can, whoops. See, I was too busy talking about all the little Easter eggs. Look how high our oil temperature got. 200, so we gotta bring the throttle back so that cools down. Remember, we're supposed to watch for that. Why didn't you remind me? We're supposed to watch for 150, and then bring it back after that. There we go. Hopefully it'll cool down now. All right, and begin taxi. So, no weather, so it doesn't really matter where we taxi to. We're just going to go straight out to whatever runway that might be. What's that going to be, like, 28 or something, probably? I guess we could pull up the map and click on the airport. 22. 22 right is what it'll be. So that's what we're going to do. Straight out to the left. And looks like there'll be a back taxi. Okay. Piece of cake, parking brake off. And all right, now we get to actually do some first look stuff as well. So what we're doing so far is just checklist stuff. Now I get to do first look stuff. It takes a lot of rudder control, but remember I have dampened my rudders full. So um, I really need to push the rudders to get anything and that's on purpose. And in this aircraft, I really got to push all the way to do anything, um, but that's okay. Doesn't take any throttle to get going though. This is kind of a silly little taxi thing here, but I'm not sure if this was actually meant for airplanes. Maybe some tiny ones. If we had peripheral vision, we would look to the right and the left, but we're not going to because we don't have peripheral vision, so we're just going to go. And um, I think it was very important to say in the POH that you must taxi with flaps up. I'm not sure why, because normally we put the flaps down as we're taxiing. But it said to do flaps up. Let's come in here a second. And how's that temperature looking? The temperature's still really high. Um, that's my fault for not paying attention. But that's okay. We're just going to slowly taxi along. And anything else to check out while we're in here? 
I don't think so. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to taxi to the end of 22 right. And hang on. Do we have taxi lights to turn on? I think we do actually since we're on the runway even though we're taxiing. Um, let's see if I can find those and look out the window at the same time. Landing lights. No taxi lights, but we have landing lights. So we'll turn landing lights on since we're on the actual runway. And I will do this quick thousand feet turn around and I'll catch you on the runway. Actually, we're going to cross over the runway because I do want to do a run up. The POH had the run up checklist and I want to do that this first time. And we're not going to run up in the turn around area because, you know, actively, actively landing and taxiing planes might need to use that. I guess planes taking off when you use it. So let's go over here. Um, go off to the side. We're going to turn around, obviously. And let's see if we can catch Venice from here. Nope. Too much to the right. So let's turn around. Then we're going to point into the wind. You always want to do your run up into the wind. In fact, the POH said you want to do your start up in the wind as well, which I thought was interesting. All right. So let's just come here. All righty and stop right here and set the parking brake and let's close the canopy because it's going to get even louder than it was i don't think we need the dome light all right well wasn't the parking brake going to work the parking brake i don't know if it's the key i mapped to my yoke but i often have to do it like two or three times all right so um, we can turn the lighting lights off too since we're off the main runway all right so here we go Run up checklist. Full, rich, call flaps open, which means you're in. Throttle to 1700. Let's make sure we're not actually running away. Come on. There's 1700. Props full, and they are. Fuel pump on. Where was that? Oh, you can't see it now. It was well, over here. Fuel pump on. Check each make for drop off. Where's my? Here it is. Um, left, and then right, and then it should come back. Back up to both. Pull carb heat out, and then in. So out, and then in. And notice light drop, and I did. Props back, and then in. Noticing the drop. Full throttle for 10 seconds. But I think it actually goes, starts to roll on us. Yeah. Yeah. And that's with the parking brake on. <laughs> that's with the parking brake on. And it starts to, that is brake hold max. <laughs> and it still runs away. So we're not going to do that part of the run up. Because that doesn't work. Alrighty. Let's see. Throttle back to a thousand RPMs. Okay, there we go. Make sure hydraulic power is on. Check light. Yes, flaps down and then up. So we come back here. Watch the flaps go down to full and then back up. Remember that's half and then full and then set the trim, which I think is already set. That's over on the autopilot. Um, yeah, this trim's already set. Okay, so that completes the run up. So let's bring mixture back and throttles back to about 800 because we are going to taxi now. Let's turn landing lights on since we're almost on the runway. Let's go to taxi view, parking brake off, get on the runway, and then we'll do our takeoff checklist. Alrighty, we'll line up best as we can. See, now that I mess with my rudders, I have to... Whoa, come on. Set the parking brake. There we go. Now that I mess with my rudders, I gotta... Um, gonna keep running on me? I think my, th my mixture's back way too far. Yeah, my mixture's back almost all the way. Alright, here we go. Landing lights on. They are, but let's double check. Yes, dome light off. And it is. Okay. Note the time on the clock. Um, the sim clock is nine or eight. No, seven. Five, six, seven, twenty-nine. Okay. 
how do you read a clock? All right, so 7.29, note the time of the clock. That's just going to be for flight time. Full rich if below 5,000 feet. Well, we are currently at like 10 feet. So full rich it is. Lean if you're above 5,000. Flaps up or one half. We have a very long runway, so let's do flaps up. Full throttle for one minute. Oh, you can have full throttle for up to one minute. Okay, that's what that means. Why is oil temperature so high? And our flaps are the way there's... What? That's strange. Anyway, you can have full throttle for up to one minute. Okay, so we're going to take off at 6... No, we're going to pull back at 60, but take off at 70. Then gear up, raise flaps if used, and then everything else is 1,000 AGL. Within one minute, you have to get props back to 2,227 manifold. So we got one minute to figure out what we're doing. Climbing at least 80 miles per hour, preferably 95. Okay, so we're gonna just take off, shoot for 80 to 95. Within a minute, props 22 and manifold to 27. Okay, here we go, looking forward. Parking brake off, full throttle, we have a minute to do it. Oh, heavy on those rudders, oh boy, let's get going here. Still getting used to these pedals, even though it's been a while. Um, no flaps, so what does it say? 60. We're, I'm trying to look at my checklist and look out the window at the same time. I don't know. We're going really fast. Let's pull back. All right. Flaps we did not use. Gear coming in. What are, what are those marks anyway? 60 and 70. Okay. It's really hard to look at a checklist while I'm trying to look out the window. All right. So best way to climb 80 to 95. So let's nose up. To get that 80 to 95 and fuel pump off at a thousand AGL which we're not even close to that yet and then props 22 manifold 27 so let's just look out the window there's Venice right there remember I full detail turned on so we're gonna go to the trolley line there and then we will go over Venice and check out a few other things so let's do well there's okay where's my manifold pressure because there's my props oh there's manifold next to props okay so 27 and 22 if I remember the POH it said you have to kind of go back and forth so there's 20 assy I'm bringing props back and bringing throttles forward again so there's 23 and 28 there's 27 I think let's see there's still 28, 28 and a half, 27 and a half. So there's 27 and 21. There's 22, 27 to 22, right there. Okay, we did within a minute. Hopefully we don't blow up. Oil temperature is getting kind of high, but that's okay. We got perfectly smooth frame rates, clouds and everything. All right, best way to climb. Okay, 80 to 95 and just trim for 92. So we're set. Fuel pump off 1000 AGL, which we passed that because things happen really fast. Fuel pump, good. Okay, so now I want to sightsee, but we're going to do the cruise checklist. Keep checking prop RPM and manifold pressure. Lean, make sure to smooth engine operation. So I think you bring it back down, it's shaky. Yep, and then you bring it forward again, I think it said. Yep, so let's bring it a little bit forward because we're not that high right we're only 2,000 feet above sea level so we're not going to mess with that too much what is next if fuel pressure drops turn on fuel pump open and close cowl flaps and maintain good cylinder head temp okay so cylinder head is in the green that is way over here top left corner that is dead center perfect oil temperature though is oh, oil temperature is coming down okay good so we are good there cowl flaps how are they set right now open good so we're going to leave it the way it is all right, we flew over the island, but that's okay. We're past island. Um, otherwise, as far as all this feels, smooth as silk. Of course, no bother turned on, but that's because um, that's because I want to see how the airplane operates. All right, we've climbed enough. I didn't want to give above 3,000, and we're approaching that now. So cruise, we did a cruise checklist. All right, so nothing to tell the approach and landing. So there we go, we burned through the pre-start and the engine start and the taxi and the run-up and the takeoff and the climb and the cruise checklists. Wow, that is a lot of information. But I'm getting more and more detail as time goes on. So anyway, 
even though this is a first look video and it's about the aircraft, let's still enjoy. I think I have a. No, that's not it. Well, let's, let's enjoy the simulator too. We've never flown in Italy. Look at that detail. Frame rates are locked at 30 because of my gigantic monitor, but my performance tests these would be in the 70s at 1440p. So look at that smoothness. The European Autogen. Holy cow. I think we need a screenshot. First of all, let's come down because we've blown through our 3,000 feet. I'm going to let our speed increase. I'm just going to trim to get down. Well, our props are getting kind of high. It did say you want to keep adjusting things to so keep it at 27. Well, if we go to 27 now, we're going to go way too fast. I guess we could get the speed. Yeah, let's trim down. Bring throttles. We hit 27. Oh, throttles are maxed. Throttles are maxed. That's okay. We're below 27 and we're at 22 on the RPMs. So we're just going to keep it like that. Oil temperature is good. Um, cylinder head is perfectly in the middle of the green. Good. All right, let's look outside for some views and then we're going to go over Venice, or at least the island of Venice. All the lights are on the way we want them. Let's set up a thumbnail shot as well. Let's see, that's. Wow, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous airplane. I don't know what to say. Holy cow. Um, even though this is a first look video and a cold and dark tutorial, I think we're going to do a little bit of regular flying. Wait a second, the hydraulic power. I thought we we're supposed to turn that off somewhere. Where was that? Yes, hydraulic power off. We were supposed to do that during our initial climb like everything else. So sorry about that. Um, otherwise, I think, let me just double check my checklists. Yeah, we're good. The hydraulic power is for the flaps and the nose wheel to turn. So um, since you, you know, after you get the flaps in and the gear up, then you can do the, you can do the hydraulic power. Let's just look at this thing. How awesome is that? Wow. Alrighty, well, like I was trying to say, even though this is a cold and dark tutorial and a first look, we are going to have some moments of silence and we're going to do some sightseeing. I'll catch in a little bit before we decide to head over the island itself. All right, so the cylinder head temp is fine, and the oil temperature is coming down. RPMs are 2200. Throttle is pegged, and, man and manifold is below 27, so we're fine. So we're cruising at about 135 miles per hour or so. That'd be 110, 20, yeah, 130, 133 miles per hour. So good rate of speed, very, very smooth. This is a wonderful airplane. We'll definitely be using this regularly. I can tell you that much. Um, where was this other airport, though? Uh, look at the 737 on the thing. Um, where's this other? Okay, so it's at the end of that island. Okay. Well, I see it now. We'll kind of kind of swing by there. We will do an approach there. I think we'll land there too. But let's check out Venice since we can, and that's why we're here. 
And then we'll talk about the approach and landing checklist and taxiing to our gates and then um, shutting this thing down. But first of all, I get it under control. And I did want to talk about the autopilot a little bit. Um, basically, you can tie into a VOR and um, that's what capture is because it captures the VOR. Track is kind of like your um, approach. If you have localizer, alt will hold your altitude. Manual, so if I go manual right now, it will hold our pitch and bank. And should we hold our altitude too since we can? Let's do that. So I'm just going to let go of everything. Uh, 55, 52 degrees. So let's go over here and make this 50, what other way? 52 degrees. Isn't there a fast way to do this? I don't think so. So you go 52. Let's, let's do 50. So we head towards the island. Now we do heading. Now it's going to line us up with that. So line us up with 50. There we go. So there we go. That's autopilot in a nutshell. There's Venice. It's going away. Actually, it's back here. So anyway, that's autopilot. Um, we will talk about descent in a minute, but I really want to go back and look at the island. There it is. So anyway, let's, um, you know what? Let's use autopilot to do it. So let's go this way, this way. Sorry, don't make you nauseous. Let's circle way back. And 90 degrees from where we were will be here. Let's do a little tighter turn than that. And let's take off altitude so that we can lose pitch or lose altitude a little bit, get lower. Will it let me? I don't think it actually let me. Beautiful view, but I want to get closer and check out this detail. So how do you turn this off? You go to off, right? There we go. All right. Um... Let's bring back throttles. Pitch down. Like we're crazy. And let's get a closer look here of Venice and then we'll do our approach and landing checklist because there's the airport right there. A little grass strip. I'm gonna bring our throttles more. There we go. There's a nice nose dive. But let's not get too low because then it looks cartoonish. So this should be a good. A good um, altitude. Again, the European autogen. So nice. All right, we'll use this altitude. Let's get some throttles back in a little bit. And have some looks outside, I think. Yeah. Still coming down. There you go. There is what people think of when they think of Venice. The canalways and the streets underwater because the island is sinking. And the trolleyways and the highway coming in. Very, very cool. All right. Let's get a little bit more altitude, but not much. And let's circle around and have a look at um, landing this airplane at this airport over here, wherever it went. See, now we're low. Now I lost track of it. So let's actually circle back so we can figure out the orientation of this airport. And then we should be able to have a better landing. So let's um, try to coordinate our turn a little better. There we go. And let's not lose altitude. We don't need to get that close to Venice. In fact, they'd be probably pretty annoyed at us. All right, so approach checklist and landing checklist. I have them together here. Get the destination weather altimeter setting which we don't need to worry about because weather is off um, if you're below 5,000 feet landing you want to make sure full which we'll do in a minute and fuel pump on props full hydraulic on below 100 miles per hour that's you can do your flaps final approach 75 touchdown at 55 but pull back on the nose until 50 Flaps if you're doing short field landing, which we 
are surf field or grass landing, which we are. So we will do half flaps, always no flaps required. That's my understanding. Um, flaps up immediately after you're on the ground. That's what it says here. They were very particular about that in the POH. Okay, so let's see what's the orientation of this runway. So it's we want to be 90 degrees off so I can figure this out. All right, the airport's back there. So let's turn on to our base leg. We'll do a really short final. So let's review this checklist. Below 5,000 feet, mixture full. They are props. Well, if I do props full now, we're going to be in the red. So let's not do that. That to drop back throttle to come down. And then fuel pump on. That we can do right now, which is right up there. Next step then. Actually, let's have an eye on the runway where to go. There it is. Next step then would be hydraulic on at 100 miles per hour. So we're going to come around the corner here. Once we go on final, we'll slow way down. And then props full. Mixture's already full, which is probably too soon. I can hear y'all yelling at me now. Probably should have waited, but mixture's already full. All right, here, let's turn on final. Bring throttles back. Props full. Let's get down to 100 miles an hour. And then we'll do our hydraulic thing, which is right there. Where's this runway? Right. Oh, look it. Nice. I did something right, finally. All right, let's come down, but then also slow down. So throttles back to slow down. I mean, sorry, throttles back to come down. Nose will have to come up to slow down. Which we should lose speed pretty quickly here. As soon as we get to 100, we will do hydraulic and that is for the flaps and gear should come down too so it's hydraulic so let's do gear and half flap oh wow that really floats with the flaps holy cow don't want to stall i can't tell what half flap is we oh my gosh we're right on look at that good so final approach 75 touch on at 55 but holding the nose all the way back and let it touch down or come down at 50. Feels like a crosswind, but it isn't because wind's off. Okay, so 75 must be, let's see, it's that first white tick. That must be how that's indicated, right? 90, 80, 70, or maybe the second tick. Let's aim for the first tick on the speed. All right, so here we go. First landing in this thing ever. Keep in mind it's a first look, even though it's also tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> Made for a rough tutorial when it's also first look. I'm trying to learn where everything is at the same time I'm trying to tell you where everything is. All right, so here we go. We want to touch down at 55, which should be about this, and then keep the nose wheel up, it says, until 50. It says keep it up until 50. It's up. It's still up. And down at like 52, whatever. I did my best. Oh, yeah, flaps in immediately, it said. And there we go. I'm just going to roll this out. Not bad. There's some hangers over there. We're going to aim for. And we did it. Good. All right. Um, let's have a look outside, though. Is there a taxiway? Ooh, I love the new dirt splattering around there. Nice. If I did that before, I don't remember. I know the dust on gravel and dirt. I always would blow the direction of the wind, but I don't remember dirt on turf. All right, we'll go all the way out here, and then we'll head to those hangers on the right. Let's bring back mixture a little bit, though, so we don't follow the spark plugs. I like the five runway five tape down there. All righty, slow this thing down, though. Hop inside, use a little bit of brakes. Just a little bit of brakes. I'm going to come across. Then we're going to stop right about here. And set the parking brake. All oh, right, so that. Let's see. If we had a longer taxiway, I guess not about the same. So there we go. All right, so approach. We did everything exactly as they said, including flaps up immediately. Note the time on the clock. Fuel pump off. This is what we would do if we had a longer taxi. So, what's that, 20 minute flight or so? Fuel pump off. Mixture lean already did. Landing lights off already did. So, had we had a longer taxi, that would have been the taxi to our parking. 
now that we're parked, this is the parking and shutdown checklist. Hydraulics off, strobe and position off. Let the engine idle at 700 to 900 for three minutes. We are gonna pretend we did and we're gonna keep going. Mixture shut off, there we go. Ignition off, like so. Generator off, battery off, and radio's off. But the radio's turned off when the battery turned off, obviously. But that was what the POH said. It said radio after the battery. But that wouldn't make sense, would it? Because the battery's going to kill the radio. Alrighty. So then, um, unlock this. And turn on the light. All the battery's off. So your dome light wouldn't work either, right? <laughs> um, otherwise... That is it. Any other little Easter eggs? I don't think so. So, again, that is your cold and dark tutorial for the Freeware V Flight Air Ryan Navian 205 Vintage from 1950. Also, a first look, which makes it kind of complicated to record because I'm still fumbling around and trying to figure the airplane out because it's a first look, but I'm also sharing my checklist with you. But, um, I don't think it was that incoherent or anything. I think it made sense for the most part. Now, if this were a complicated plane like a jet, we would have many flights before we did a cold and dark. For example, the Fly J Sim planes. We fly those for weeks or months before they offer a cold and dark. But you guys are asking for more tutorials, and this was a pretty straightforward plane, so I thought I'd do a two-in-one for you. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed Venice. Hopefully you enjoyed checking out the Autogen, the European Autogen. Oh, look at that in the background, the island. Look at that. How awesome is that? In fact, let's swing back this way so we don't miss it. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the flight. I certainly did. It was great to fly again tonight. If you're a regular subscriber, thank you for your continued support. Is that really a shopping mall? Hmm, I wonder if that's really there. Anyway, if you found me by accident, please like, please subscribe, please share with your friends. If you have any ideas for a flight you want me to do, let me know. I do have a few sub requests coming up in the next couple flights. Otherwise, Leave your comments below and any questions you might have or suggestions you might have, and I'll catch you next time.